Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSB exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to DRM, data retention, archiving, and destruction in Domain 2 to understand how they relate, how they interrelate, and to guide your studies. This is the fifth of five videos for Domain 2. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a small part of our complete CCSP masterclass. Digital Rights Management, DRM, is the set of technologies, policies, and practices designed to control the usage, distribution, and access to digital content. Put simply, DRM technologies encrypt videos, music, ebooks, etc., which gives the copyright owner control over who can do what with the media. This includes restrictions on how many times you can play a movie, what device you can play music on, whether or not you can print an ebook, whether you can edit a PDF. DRM technologies allow copyright holders to set and enforce rules on how their content is used. Consumer DRM is a specific type of DRM focused on protecting digital content consumed by individual users, such as music, movies, books, and games, etc. It ensures that content can only be used in ways permitted by the content owner or publisher. Enterprise DRM refers to broader digital rights management practices applied within organizations focused on controlling access and usage of digital content like documents, multimedia, and proprietary business information. Enterprise DRM is an umbrella term for managing and controlling access to all digital content within an enterprise. IRM is a subset of enterprise DRM, but focuses more narrowly on the control of sensitive business documents and emails within the enterprise. IRM, by the way, stands for Information Rights Management. It applies to fine-grained access controls at the document level to ensure that only authorized individuals can read, edit, or forward documents both within the organization and when shared externally. Auditing in IRM refers to the ability to track and monitor how protected documents are accessed and used. IRM systems can record detailed information about user activities such as who opened the file, when it was accessed, and what actions, like printing, editing, or sharing, were performed. Signing involves adding a digital signature to a document to ensure its authenticity, integrity, and non-repudiation. Sealing refers to the encryption of a document to enforce IRM policies and control access. So these are two very useful functions of IRM, signing and sealing. IRM systems can enforce specific permissions, access based on the classification of a document. Quite useful. Finally, IRM systems can control all sorts of permissions, including copying and pasting of text, taking screenshots, printing, forwarding or sharing, editing or modifying, or even restricting access after a certain date or time. Fundamentally, IRM systems provide organizations with very granular control over how sensitive documents and data are accessed, stored, and shared and used. There are a number of challenges related to DRM in the cloud, and they are rooted in the complexity of protecting digital content in distributed, multi-device, and remote environments. Add to this, DRM relies on trusted environments, but cloud providers have access to the infrastructure. This creates a dependency on third-party providers to ensure content is safeguarded against breaches and insider threats. All right, let's move on to the second major topic of this mind map, data retention, archiving, and deletion of data. Doing these things correctly in the cloud starts with having good data retention policies. The policies must define how long data is stored, managed, and when it must be disposed of by an organization using cloud services. An important consideration as part of the policy is how long data needs to be retained for and when the data can be archived. There are significant cost implications here. Obviously, the more data you're storing in the cloud, the more cost, but there's more to it than this. The speed at which you can access data plays a huge role in how much it costs to store data in the cloud. If you're able to mark data for archiving and move that data to slower and cheaper storage, then the cost savings can be significant. Defensible destruction of data in the cloud refers to the systematic and legally compliant process of securely deleting data in a way that can be justified and proven in case of audits, legal inquiries, or regulatory reviews. Put another way, destroying data in such a way that you can prove it is unrecoverable. 
Defensible data destruction can be difficult to achieve in the cloud or impossible with certain services and providers. So you need to look carefully at your defensible data destruction requirements before you move data to the cloud. There are many ways to destroy data and some are much better than others. So let's go through three main categories and then specific techniques within them. The first and very best category is destruction, which means we physically destroy the media the data is stored on. Purging is the next best category. And purging means using logical or physical techniques to sanitize data, making it so the data cannot be reconstructed. And finally, the worst category here is clearing, which means using logical techniques to sanitize data to a level where it may not be reconstructed. That's not super reassuring. It may not be reconstructed. So obviously we want destruction or failing that purging. Clearing is not great. Okay, now let's look at different techniques, starting with the best to the worst. The best is, of course, to physically destroy the media. Ideally, melt the hard drive, burn it to the point that all <laughs> that is left is some smoke and maybe a puddle of metal. There is no way you're getting that data back. The next best method is to shred, disintegrate, or drill a hole in the media. These techniques are not nearly as good because with the right tools, it's still possible to read data even off little shreds of a hard drive or if a hard drive's had a hole drilled in it, but still better than nothing. Degaussing involves applying a very strong magnetic field to magnetic media like hard drives or tapes. The strong magnetic field destroys the data. The reason degaussing fits between destruction and purging is because it may, may render the data and media unusable, thus essentially destroying the media. Uh, and I'll show you a diagram here in a second that'll make all of this a lot clearer, like when I say it's sitting between destruction and, and purging. Crypto shredding is the idea that to destroy the data, we encrypt the data with an excellent algorithm like AES with a 256-bit key, and then we destroy every single copy of the encryption key. With the encryption key destroyed, we have effectively crypto shredded the data and made it unrecoverable. Crypto shredding fits somewhere between purging and clearing. So as long as the key is never recovered or brute forced or a flaw is not found in the encryption algorithm, then the data cannot be recovered. It has been purged. But if any of those were true, say someone found the key, then the data may be recoverable and, and thus has just been cleared. Overwriting, wiping, or erasure. <laughs> I'll refer to writing over the data with zeros or all ones or some combination so that all the sectors of the storage device, all the original data is replaced with this overwritten data. This process can be done multiple times, but even so, research has shown that pretty much no matter how many times you overwrite the data, some of the original data may still be recoverable. Thus, this is a clearing technique. And the worst method for destroying data is to format the drive. This is the worst technique because formatting by default leaves most, if not all of the existing data on the disk, meaning the data can be easily recovered with the right tools. Okay, so here finally is that really nice depiction of the different data destruction methods and how they fit within destruction, purging, or clearing, as we discussed. And there you go. That's an overview of DRM, data retention, archiving, and data destruction in domain two, covering the most important topics you need to know for the exam. Thank you.